So, my name is Lauren, and the title of my project is SRH Education and Skill Building Programs in Serenavia. For those of you who don't know, SRH stands for Sexual and Reproductive Health. Um, so, this is just like the agenda of my PowerPoint, but so I'll just dive right in. Um, why are why is sexual and reproductive health and skill building programs important? Um, so first, I guess it's good to give a little background. I studied abroad in Chile and I took a class at Universidad Alberto Hurtado, which partnered us with uh, uh, nonprofits in different sectors of Santiago, not the ones that we weren't weren't living in necessarily. Um, and I found that. In Serenavia specifically, there's a very high rate of adolescent pregnancy, and so I decided to do my service work there. Um, I later did some more research and learned that adolescent pregnancy, as you can imagine, if you're between 15 and 19 years old, having a baby will directly change or really affect the course of your life. So I've, through my research, I found that the education attainment levels of teen uh, moms is definitely lower. Um, most of the time they drop out of school uh, to take care of their children, which leads to a, a lower workforce participation or without those high school degrees, the types of work that they are going to find is not necessarily, um, the higher skill levels aren't needed. And then this means that they have a lower bargaining power within the household. So their decision, uh, the decisions that they're trying to make within their household aren't um, necessarily the ones that are coming to fruition. So the men will make the decisions in the household. And in general, women make better decisions for the household. Um, so SRH um, is very important. Sexual and reproductive health education is very important in hopes of delaying adolescent pregnancy so that the education level can increase, workforce participation can increase, as well as the bargaining power in the household. Um, and so why Serenavia, I think uh, I talked about, about this already, but the percentage I found of teen moms in Serenavia is 20.9%. So between 15 and 19 years old, 20.9% of the teens, uh, teen girls become pregnant, and that's one in five. Wow. Um, how does sexual and reproductive health education play a part? With um, sexual and reproductive health education, you're able to make better decisions about your sexual and reproductive health. Um, but here in Chile, the content of those education programs isn't defined, so schools uh, take, the, take the role to define the content of the education, and uh, parents decide if their children will participate. So the students need to have their parents' permission to go to attend a type of class uh, facilitated by a matrona. Um, and Cerro Navia is an econ economically disadvantaged neighborhood, so the teens don't have that many after school programs. So through some of my research, preliminary research, I found that not the education won't necessarily curb the, t the amount of teen pregnancies, but when combined with after school programs, those two together seem to have a lot of positive results in terms of um, decreasing that adolescent pregnancy rate. But Serenavia lacks those after school programs. So they really don't have both of those things going on right now. Um, so like I said, when I studied abroad, I took classes at La Católica, but I was very interested in one offered at Universidad Alberto Hurtado <coughs> called Pobreza y Desarrollo. So through my six month stay here, um, taking that class, we studied things like sociology, economics, theology, and how that all relates to poverty uh, here in Chile. And then through the class, I, like I said, my service was with the foundation, Fundación Sierra Navia Joven. And the foundation works with all sorts of cohort, all types of cohorts of the community Sierra Navia. So there's a program for the, the elderly, there's a program for the teen moms, which I worked in. The, um, they are connected with Colegio Don Enrique Alviar, as well as they're trying to start up a program for the teens. Um, so when I did my service, I met with the teen moms twice a week, and it, my service was more just focusing on solidarity. So being someone that they could talk to about things going on in their life, um, it was a safe space that the Fundacion created for them, and we often invited guest speakers to talk about nutrition, um, 
gender equality, things like that. So my another girl from the US and I would organize those events as well as just like have art projects or just um, have bonuses with the women. But when I left my study abroad, I realized that us being there every, because every semester new gringos come and, and do um, these service projects, I realized that we weren't really changing much of in terms of making sure that these girls were gonna stay in school, um, really set goals, from them, set goals for themselves and try to attain those goals. So I dedicated um, a summer of research, so I um, had a grant from my university in the US to come to Santiago to do participant observation and interviews with teen moms. So I met with over 20 to discuss their sexual and reproductive health education and it's basically what I said in my previous slides. There's little to no classes um, as well as in terms of the resources at the clinic that they're able to access. A lot of them have feel, feel uncomfortable going to see someone to access birth control and then they also need their parents' permission until they're 18. Um, so the se sexual and reproductive health resources are very scarce, and that's what I found out during um, this summer of research. So that summer was really focused on the sexual and reproductive health education and understanding um, their, what's going on in Serenavia, but I think this year is more, it's going to be focused on the skill building programs because that's what I found to really decrease that adolescent pregnancy rate. Um, and then through, I had two capstone projects at Notre Dame. Um, I was an international development minor and a poverty studies minor. And so through those capstone projects, I looked at uh, skill building programs and their benefits. So the skill building programs aren't necessarily just to, it's not just to curb teen pregnancy, but it will also decrease drug and alcohol um, addiction among teens. So the first phase of my uh, research here, the first three months, I am going to just immerse myself in Sierra Navia. So like I said, they are partnered with Don, Colegio Don Enrique Alvear. I'll be working as a TA in, a, in the English courses there. So I think that will be um, where my mornings are dedicated. And then during afternoons, I'll be um, with the adolescent mothers, as well as um, trying to work on uh, the, the youth group that the foundation is trying to start up. Um, then the I will also just be doing more, more research on sexual and reproductive health. So when I was here for two months, I didn't sit in on any classes um, just because I was here during the winter. So they had about three uh, weeks of winter break and just being uh, not too familiar with how to maneuver like some professors want to get back to my emails or phone calls, so I'm going to be a lot more pers persistent this time and also interview uh, school healthcare workers and um, try to evaluate students' work. So if they're taking a test on the sexual and reproductive uh, health education class, I'll look at um, their answers and see how, how much they learn during that class. Uh, and then for the uh, the next three months, so that, that was the first three months, the next three months will be conducting 15 participant interviews with uh, f 15 teens in the community as well as their families. And the questions I'll be asking will really help, will help me design the after school programs. So questions such, such as, um, you know, what are your favorite activities to do? How do you learn best? Um, with the parents I'll be asking, uh, what are you comfortable with um, in terms of your son or daughter learning about sexual and reproductive health, things like that. Um, I don't have questions designed yet just because I don't want to make assumptions about what, um, what I should ask. So the first three months I'll be designing those questions as well. Um, and then the last three months, well I guess throughout my whole time here, I'll be working at a, as a TA in the class I took. So I'll be able to utilize, utilize the university resources. Um, my, my mentor is Professor Isabel Donoso, and she'll be able to connect me with other faculty in the university that are interested in my project. Um, and, and I'll be hoping to uh, elicit assistance from other university students that are hoping to do their practica or internships. They could work with me um, to design the after school program. And hopefully when I leave, Santiago, they would be taking over so that it's sustainable.
these are these will be my partners um, at Fundación Sierra Nadia Joven. There's the executive director Nilitza, um, as well as the professors at Colegio Don Enrique Alvear, um, the program coordinators at the Fundación, um, and then I'll be working with motivated community members that um, I'll hopefully I'd be identifying identifying through um, immersing myself in the community programs. And then at uh, Universidad Alberto Hurtado, Isabel Donoso is my research mentor. Um, and then as a student in that class, we had a lot of guest speakers. So I know Oscar Navarrete is an economist at the Universidad Alberto Hurtado. Um, and I already talked about it, but including students um, in the class as well as throughout the university. So just in short, the project goal I have is to design and implement an after-school program that is skill building and um, touches uh, on sexual and reproductive health um, in terms of education, educating the youth. And I hope it's sustainable. Um, it's dynamic, just meaning that I'm not sure what the students want to do, and I'm not going in there assuming that they want to have a you know a soccer league. That's not necessarily what they want to be doing um, with their time. So that's what my uh, questions will elicit from them. And then it's community-based so that, um, that community-based so that they are really telling me what they would like to do with those resources. Um, and then also with my research uh, through my university capstones, I've just found that sexual and reproductive health education should be more than just uh, the reproductive side of education, but the talk about emotional health, sexuality, and relationships. And then I don't know if any of you know where Serenavia is, or if you've been there, if you plan to visit, but it's the most uh, northwest, and uh, it's it's very different from here in Providencia, just to say the least. So I definitely think the, the people that live there are so kind, so if you want to make a trip over with me to check out my service, uh, my, my site, um, it's just a short bus ride from where I live in Quinta Normal, but that's a, just an aerial view. And they do have like a very long park that goes up Costa Nera, Costa Nera Norte, for sure, uh, one of the roads. So. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have about eight minutes for questions. So, we take a minute. Sorry. Mm -hmm. sure, that's fine. You, you mentioned the word ONS. Could you explain that to me? ONS is like the dinner time meal. I would eat mine with my host family around 9 p.m., but it can be a little earlier or later. And it's um, just a really light meal because they think they're more lunch heavy here in Chile. And it always consisted of a type of bread, avocado, ham and cheese, manjar, which is like a dulce de leche spread, and tea. How do you think you can use your findings as a model for other places? Do you plan on taking it somewhere else or publishing somewhere? Um, I haven't thought about that yet, um, but I just think because I've had so much extensive contact here, it was like the right place to choose, obviously. Um, but I definitely think it can be, uh, it could, I could publish something in terms of seeing the results of if adolescent pregnancy and if um, drug and alcohol uh, addiction go down with the program, the mentorship after school program. Um, I just think that, that each community is so different and not necessarily sure which types of programs would work best. And that's, I think, what I found within my research. So looking at boys and girls clubs of, of the USA and like um, YMCA, uh, what's another big one? But they're all different and they all have mixed reviews. But. So I guess to go off that, do you plan on coming back and seeing results, testing, and things? Yes. I was wondering about your after-school programs. Are they going to be volunteer-based, or are you going to seek funding, grants, or anything like that to help fund them into the future? Mm -hmm. even? So Fundación Cernavia is trying to start one up, but they just have one person that walks around and take takes notes of where, um, like the, the youth are hanging out in Cernavia and what they're doing. He'll go and talk to them, but. Um, because the my university and Alberto Hurtado have foreign exchange students that do their service work in all of these sites, I think that they would be a great resource if they want to have more of an internship mm -hmm. and be those um, 
leaders of the, of the after school program, of course it's not necessarily the best to always have a turnover, but if Fundacion Serena Vyapoven has a couple, um, or you know, the same group leader that they have right now, and then just having the resources from Alberto Hurtado in terms of students um, that can connect the youth of Serenavia with university resources or just plan events and things like that. But I think that's how it would be sustainable because there's always going to be a new cohort of foreign exchange students. Or using the Chilean students at the school yeah. at Alberto Hurtado. What do you know and what can you tell us about um, sexual and reproductive health that exists at those schools already? So through the 20 interviews I did um, during the summer a year ago, uh, like a matrona would come from the local health clerk, health clinic, and there are five in Serenavia, to uh, give like a little charla of one or two hours to students. But it was just one time. and. When I would ask them what they learned about, they would say contraception and like the body, the parts of the body, but nothing, nothing else. And then it was also just a little, like uncomfortable for them to talk about. They weren't exactly, you know, willing to talk to me about those things. So that's why um, it helped that I had been there before because there was that like already a relationship. But uh, it would be if they, and then half of the girls, so ten of them, did not even take a class in their schools. send you my papers if you want to read <laughs> Were all of your interviews with women? Yes. Do you plan to do that again, to interview with women? It would be the family, okay. so um, including the men's perspective and the parents' perspective but as well. But um, Because I'll be in the, the Colegio Don Enrique Alvear, I'll be meeting more teens, so I could um, interview both. I'm not exactly sure, but yes, the idea is to have every group of, like, every age, you know, teen and up uh, represented in my sample. For both males and females, or females? Both. Because the after school programs won't just be for females. Okay. Other questions? No? I'm sure we'll have some more little credulous as we continue. Uh, next up we have uh, Catherine Briggs. Yes. Yeah. All right, one more round of applause for the